Hi everyone, I'm Zach Reinhardt, here to review the new Loop Rider album, Ascension. Loop Rider is a Tokyo indie band signed on to Call and Response Records, which are um, possibly my favorite record label in Japan. They're really consistently good. This is Loop Rider's sophomore album, following up their debut My Electric Fantasy from last year. And while I liked their last album, I wasn't uh, crazy about it. It was um, very similar to kind of, I don't know, new album all the way through Noise era Boris. It was a lot of uh, kind of shoegazy, a little bit of doom metal stuff, um, but very kind of poppy melodies and uh, clean production. It was decent. I, I liked it, but uh, I wasn't crazy about it. It didn't make my top ten. But um, this new album is very different. Uh, they cite influences like Melt Banana, uh, Japanese artists like Mersbau and Incapacitance, and um, like 80s DC hardcore like Minor Threat and Fugazi. I also, I also hear, hear like... Um, Pink era Boris. Um, I also hear uh, maybe even some grindcore like Napalm Death. Um, and I hear like Tokyo Anal Dynamite era The Ghetto Getty Gay Gay Gay, which is um, an absolutely stellar record. And the result of combining all these influences together is one of the most compelling abrasive just aggressive records i've heard all year this thing is only about 20 minutes but it is solid energy front to back starting off with the track n-e-c-o this is um a like two and a half minute noise track uh with a little electronic presence but it's mostly guitar it's got these just roaring squealing feedback and uh, these twittering electronics in it, and um, it's got this kind of sputtering low uh, noise to it that makes it sound like a like a thunderstorm's rolling in from the distance. And um, I think there's vocals in it. Like it's so distorted that I'm not entirely sure, but I think it sounds like vocals that are like really heavily distorted. And it starts off pretty much just noise, but as the song goes on, these kind of doom metal -y, like dark, heavy chords start to come in and just kind of hang in the air. It sets the album's mood as this very dark, brooding, uh, kind of aggressive and uh, just dense and cluttered soundscape that will carry on through to the end of the album. Then it switches into Phantomas, the uh, second track, which is very hardcore punk inspired. It starts off with these very brittle, loud, distorted uh, guitars and these kind of driving, aggressively played drums that are a lot clearer than the rest of the mix. The song is very kind of lo-fi. The whole thing's distorted, but the drums really cut through that kind of wall of sound and are very clear and easy to hear. The instruments are played aggressively, the vocals are just screamed, and they're kind of buried in the wall of sound, and the song just kind of pummels you into the wall from the very beginning, and it switches very quickly into the song Doppelganger, which is even more lo-fi. It's even more dense. The drums are a little less present, and the noise is even louder. There's this screeching feedback in the background. And the album really runs with this kind of hardcore punk inspired, uh, like noise drenched, uh, lo-fi, just dense pummeling wall of sound up until the song Sekai, which is another very fast paced punk track for the first half, but then uh, switches into these very kind of heavy, um, maybe Boris from Pink, era like metal 
chords and riffs. Um, it, it slows down. It lets you finally take a little bit of a breath, but not too much because it's still dense. It's still heavy and it's still just dark and abrasive. And my only real complaint with this track is that it cuts off kind of abruptly at the end. And I wish it kind of played out to a more natural end point. But uh, they said apparently a lot of this is from improvisation. So maybe that wasn't really an option. Uh, it's kind of the nature of the beast. But where Sekai kind of leaves off, the next track, Ascension, picks up. And it takes the heavy metally kind of lo-fi doom that uh, the end of Sekai was doing and really runs with it and makes a full three minute track out of it and um, it's possibly my favorite track on the album it is um, incredibly just dense uh, it's a little less lo-fi um, it's not quite as brittle as the earlier songs uh, there's a bit more bass presence on here and the drums, once again, just really cut through the mix and are very clear and very um, aggressively played. The song is really driven by the melody of these kind of dark, doomy guitar chords that are deep and distorted, and they kind of remind me a bit of like Electric Wizard. Um, they're very heavy. But there's also this element of noise to this track, as there is with all of these tracks, where there's just this squealing feedback in the background. But the song is just uh, so damn heavy, and it's such a good change of pace from the very fast, aggressive punk tracks that we were getting at the beginning. Um, it's really a, a great uh, track and it goes well with the next track which is also great Mustafar um, this was kind of the single uh, it has a music video and um, this thing is pummeling and loud and it picks up into more of that kind of hardcore uh, gear that a lot of the earlier tracks were but it also maintains this uh, like heavy metal aspect to it it's got these screamed vocals and uh, this just kind of pounding like pumping uh, drums that really take the track and drive it all the way to the end it really just gets your blood pumping it's very aggressively played it's very loud it's very in your face and um, it reminds me a lot of when I've gone to see bands like Melt Banana live and like Napalm Death live and like these just really aggressive metal bands that I've seen live it really feels like that this feels like a live album to an extent uh, the only thing that's missing is the mosh pit um, so Loop Rider if you're listening I I need you to come to America so I can mosh to your music. But then to uh, kind of bring us down from the highs of the mo majority of the album is the ending track, 667. Because, you know, 666 is so yesterday. We're on 667 now. And uh, this is a lot more electronic. Um, and it's pretty much just a straight noise track. Uh, I do hear some guitars, I think. It's so dense it's hard to tell for sure, but I do think I hear like some kind of squealing guitar feedback buried in the mix. And um, th this track is the longest by far, at over seven minutes long. And because of that um, length, it, it kind of loses its abrasiveness for me and becomes kind of soothing almost to an extent, which is something I find consistently happens with long form noise tracks, um, which is why I think like Tokyo Anal Dynamite is such a great record because it just never fucking lets you breathe. You can hardly even blink listening to that album. But... Uh, <laughs> This, this track really comes off like a Mers Bow track. Uh, it's very electronic. Um, there's this kind of rumbling, low noise that sounds like, uh, sounds like almost like you're in a waterfall. And 
these like shots of high pitched twittering and squealing and feedback kind of shoot around on either ear as the uh, song goes on. And it really just kind of sticks with that throughout the um, length of the track. And uh, I feel like how long it is kind of contrasts with the rest of the really fast paced uh, songs on the album. Most of these songs are like a minute or less. And uh, I, f I feel like it doesn't really fit in with the uh, rest of the tracks quite as much, both in how electronic it is and also in how, um, like, it's just different in tone. Uh, it, it's very kind of just dense and uh, it kind of just shuts your brain off and you, it, it, like I said, almost becomes kind of relaxing. Um, I would have liked it more if it was more like three minutes or something, but who knows, maybe that's what they were going for and that's all intentional, but uh, I, I feel like it's a good track on its own, but it doesn't quite fit with the rest of the album as much. But yeah, those are like, like Sekai cuts off a little early and 667's a little too long. And those are like my only complaints I have with the whole album. Um, this thing is really just solid blood pumping aggression. Uh, it's, it's really incredible to listen to it. It's probably one of the most compelling records I've heard all year so far. And, um, I'm really looking forward to whatever Loop Rider is doing in the future. I understand they already have a third album written, but it's not recorded yet. So I will definitely be covering that when that comes out. But yeah, um, I'm feeling a 9 out of 10 on this thing. Uh, some really incredible stuff here. Um, link in the description. Check it out on Bandcamp. I can't really describe to you in enough words how pummeling and aggressive and just uh, loud this album is, but also just how much... Um, depth there is to it and how detailed it is. Um, there's really a lot of good production on here as well. Uh, I have no complaints about the production. Um, I'm just really, uh, really loving this record. Yeah, um, that's me. New Loop Rider album, Ascension. It's damn good. This thing sounds like hell on wheels. Peace.